On the 4th of December 2022, popular live streamer Gan Shaoxiong, better known to his fans as Xiao Pang, meaning Little Fat, was streaming walking through a market in Kathmandu in Nepal. He was filming two of his friends and collaborators when, suddenly, the camera seemed to fall and screams could be heard from Gan Shaoxiong before the camera froze. Gan Shaoxiong or Xiao Pang had been attacked from behind by someone with a knife. He would later die of his wounds. The last video of him sitting, bleeding in the streets looking almost confused about what just happened. His killer would turn out to be someone he once considered a friend. Gan Shaoxiong had built an audience of 5 million fans on TikTok with his channel, Xiao Pang Adventures in Africa. In his videos he would introduce life in various African nations to people in China, sing and vlog about his own life. His friendly, warm and upbeat personality saw his channel grow quickly and he tried to show a side of Africa people in China perhaps didn't know about. Growing up in Hunan province, at the age of 19 Gan Shaoxiong made the choice to move to the southern African nation of Zambia. For a number of years it had been a growing trend for Chinese people, who perhaps didn't have the best job prospects to find well-paid work in Africa. His parents ran a small restaurant which Gan Shaoxiong had been working in for a number of years and gained valuable cooking experience. This would help find him a job in a Chinese restaurant in Zambia. The restaurant was funded by a Chinese company but run by local Zambians. Due to his optimistic, friendly personality, Gan Shaoxiong quickly became a popular member of staff at the restaurant. The manager took a particular shine to him and thought he would make a suitable boyfriend for his daughter. The manager introduced Gan Shaoxiong to his daughter Marjorie and the pair started a relationship. Marjorie's family would suffer a disaster when their house collapsed, almost killing her father. Gan Shaoxiong invited the whole family to the apartment he was renting and helped the family any way he could. Over time his videos would gain increasing popularity in China. He wanted to try and change the prejudicial view many people have about African countries, that they are just dirty and poor. Gan Shaoxiong wanted to show the culture, food and lifestyle of the different regions. He was always happy to help other vloggers and offer advice. He would often collaborate with a number of them. One of those was Little Simba, who was with him when Gan Shaoxiong was attacked. Unfortunately for him, Gan Shaoxiong would also meet and decided to help another person trying to break into vlogging. This would be the man who stabbed and killed Gan Shaoxiong. Known online as Ya Yun, his real name is Feng Changyun. Feng Changyun had seen the success of Gan Shaoxiong and wanted to recreate it for himself. He registered an account on TikTok with the name Ayun Global Drift and he would go to Vietnam and produce videos of his experiences there. However, for whatever reason his content saw little success, so he contacted Gan Shaoxiong and headed to Zambia. As was typical of him, Gan Shaoxiong welcomed Feng Changyun and did what he could to help the new arrival, including allowing Feng Changyun to stay in his home rent free. After some time it became clear that Feng Changyun didn't fit in with the rest of the team and he struggled to find the same success as Gan Shaoxiong or Little Simba. Feng Changyun also seemed to find it difficult to adjust to the new environment, even on occasions he was sick he blamed Gan Shaoxiong. However, Gan Shaoxiong would continue to encourage him. He suggested part of the issue was the quality of equipment Feng Changyun was using. The others all used high quality phones for their live streams, he told Feng Changyun to buy an iPhone. This piece of advice would eventually be what would get Gan Shaoxiong killed in Kathmandu. Unfortunately, Gan Shaoxiong can't tell his side of the story so it is necessary to listen to Feng Changyun as to why he felt he needed to take such extreme steps that day. He claimed he paid $1,200 for an iPhone from China. The phone was to be brought to Zambia by one of the group who had returned home. Feng Changyun says he never received the phone or got his money back. He accused Gan Shaoxiong of giving it to someone else. Soon after he left Zambia, and at some point ended up in Nepal. He blamed Gan Shaoxiong for his lack of success and would make frequent death threats towards him in videos. Even though his number of followers doubled during that time. When he found out Gan Shaoxiong was in the market that day, Feng Changyun went there to carry out the death threats he had been making in his videos. He stabbed Gan Shaoxiong several times and injured little Simba. Little Simba would recover from his injuries, Feng Changyun would be arrested by the Nepalese police. As of the making of this video his sentence hasn't been decided. Ownership of the social media accounts belonging to Gan Shaoxiong was changed to his girlfriend of 10 years, Marjorie. She would receive an outpouring of support from fans of Gan Shaoxiong, who loved him, for his personality and the content he created for the enjoyment of millions of people. 
popular TikToker Amu Chu, also known as Lamu, was streaming to her fans from her home on September 14, 2020. Without warning, the screen went black and the horrific screams of Lamu could be heard. Her ex husband had entered her family home with a can of gasoline. He poured it on the home and on Amu Chu before setting his ex wife alight. With devastating burns over much of her body, Amu Chu would die in hospital after a short time in a coma. Amu Chu had amassed close to 10 million followers, making videos about her daily life in rural China, a topic which has a lot of popularity in the country. Amu Chu grew up and lived in Guanyin Chaotang in Guang'an City. Although it is located in Sichuan province, it is considered to belong to the Aba, Tibetan and Qiang Autonomous Prefecture. The region lies on the northwestern edge of the Tibet and Qinghai Plateau. And it was here Ai Chu made the videos that brought her to fame, singing traditional songs and showing her fans the lifestyle and culture of the people who inhabit the region. Her cheerful and lively personality drew fans to her and she became one of the most watched creators on the platform. However, her smile was often masking an unhappy home life. The cause of unhappiness in her life was the man who had twice been her husband and ex-husband. When she was just 18 she married a man from the village named Tang Lu. They had three sons together, but Tang Lu was a violent man who regularly abused Amu Chu. Unhappy in the marriage Amu Chu felt she had no choice but to stay with him because of the children. Then in 2012 her mother passed away after an illness. This meant that Amu Chu had to spend more time taking care of her father who had his own health issues to deal with. This created resentment in Tang Lu who felt neglected. The abuse would become more frequent and worse. The success she saw with her videos brought with it monetary rewards. It was perhaps this financial independence and the knowledge that she alone could now take care of her family and children, which gave her the strength and confidence to finally get divorced, something that still will often have a stigma attached to it in small rural villages in China. On March 9, 2020, Amu Chu was granted a divorce from Tang Lu. She would photograph herself smiling with the divorce certificate outside the government building. Unfortunately, her happiness didn't last. Amazingly, Tang Lu would be granted custody of at least one of the children in the agreement, despite his violent abusive personality. He would go to the home of Amu Chu, pathetically begging to be taken back. When she refused, he threatened harm to the children. Amu Chu reported him to the police but, as is all too common, the police didn't want to get involved in a domestic issue. He would return once again, this time apologizing, begging and promising he will change and never abuse her. Amu Chu made the choice to remarry only a couple of weeks after being granted a divorce. Of course, Tang Lu continued his abuse, this time much worse than before. Amu Chu this time went to the county's women's federation for help and filed for divorce again on the 18th of May. She didn't return home for fear of what Tang Lu would do to her so she went to stay with other relatives. Wanting to know where she was he would beat the sister of Ai Mu Chu to try and get the information. After this in June she would be granted a second divorce but again the children would go to their father. The second divorce and no longer having the power he once had over Ai Mu Chu is what brought him to the home with gasoline and a knife that day in September. He attacked her with the knife first while she was streaming then poured the gasoline all over her family home and on Ai Mu Chu. He lit the gasoline before running away leaving Ang Mu Chu to burn and her sister and father to fight the fire. When news about what had happened broke, her fans raised 1 million RMB in just 7 hours to help pay for her medical treatment. Unfortunately, the injuries she sustained were too severe and Ang Mu Chu passed away on the 30th of September. The family returned any of the unspent money donated back to the donation platform. Tang Lu was arrested soon after the attack but due to the pandemic it would take 2 years for him to face justice. He faced his trial on December 28, 2021. He was found guilty of intentional homicide and was sentenced to death. He was also ordered to pay the family of Ang Mu Chu compensation. A debt that likely would pass on to his own family after his death. Almost unbelievably, he appealed his sentence and would face a second trial. It took place on March 23, 2022. The court upheld the original sentence. He was executed a few months later in July. In the aftermath of the case the family finished building a new house after the fire destroyed their old one. The TikTok account of Amu Chu is still active and being run by her sister Zhuang. She still uploads videos of the life her sister used to lead, sometimes with their father. They still get views and Amu Chu still has millions of fans that remember the happiness she brought to them. The final case in this anthology combines elements of the previous stories. 
another public murder with a knife as in the case of Gan Shaoxiong, and the killer being a former romantic partner as in the death of An Muchu. While the victim didn't have the same number of fans online as Gan Shaoxiong or An Muchu, she was growing in popularity before she was stabbed and had her throat slashed by the man she had just recently broken up with. Chen Qiaofeng was a 22-year-old dance teacher and had managed to gain 400,000 followers on TikTok. Her beauty and cute dancing were obvious attractions for people using the app. She started gaining fans after a video of her dancing in a boat on Westlake, a very popular tourist attraction in the city of Hangzhou, went viral. This single video would gain almost 2 million likes. There was nothing particularly special about the dance but people in the comments seemed to be taken in by the cuteness of it. This would be the start of her TikTok fame. She grew up in Ningbo City in China's southeastern province of Zhejiang. Growing up in a fairly successful family, Chen Qiaofeng had the benefit of parents who would fully support her hobbies and help her cultivate her talents rather than focusing on her academic performance. Her hobby was dancing and continued to be a passion of hers after she completed her education. In 2015 she started working as a teacher in Cixi City, kindergarten. However, she wanted to focus more on dance, so she would quit and take a teaching position in a dance studio in the city. Her parents bought her a small apartment in the city, and a Mercedes-Benz as they thought it would be more convenient for her. In 2017, she would meet the man who would eventually end her life, Wu Yidong. Wu Yidong was 27 when he met the 22-year-old Chen Qiaofeng and came from a very different background. His family was quite poor and he was largely raised by his grandmother as his parents were out working. The two had a mutual attraction and entered into a relationship. Wu Yidong claimed he was making money by selling clothes online at the time. The parents of Chen Qiaofeng didn't have too many requirements for their daughter's boyfriend, just that he was a good man who treated their daughter well. Unfortunately, Wu Yidong didn't meet either of those. Wu Yidong had a short fuse and a violent explosive temper. When upset he would scream, shout and smash things. This would scare Chen Qiaofeng, who broke up with him on a number of occasions. However, when she did this Wu Yidong would manipulate her into taking him back. Crying, promising he would change or threatening to hurt himself if she didn't take him back. But the changes he promised would only last for a short time. However, it was during a peaceful time in the relationship and a trip to Hangzhou when Wu Yidong filmed the dance that went viral. While Chen Qiaofeng was happy and surprised by the reaction the video got, she had no desire to become a TikTok star. She had a job she enjoyed and didn't have to worry about making money to take care of her parents. Wu Yidong, on the other hand, saw nothing but an opportunity to make money. He would pressure her to continue making videos so he could use them to promote the clothing he sold. In just one month they would make and release close to 60 videos. Feeling now that he was just using her, Chen Qiaofeng broke up with Wu Yidong for what would be the final time. He tried to get her back, bombarding her with messages begging her to be with him. When that failed he would send her videos of him abusing the pet dogs they bought together. On August 1, 2018, only one year after they met, Wu Yidong followed Chen Qiaofeng after she left work. He accosted her by a small claw machine arcade. She tried to fight to get away but he pushed her into the store where he stabbed her several times and cut her throat. The boss of the store would fight Wu Yidong off with a mop. People who saw what happened tried to help save Chen Qiaofeng before the emergency services arrived, using their shirts to try and slow the bleeding down. Their efforts were in vain and Chen Qiaofeng would soon die from blood loss. Later that night Wu Yidong would hand himself in to a local police station and confess. In May of 2019 Wu Yidong was found guilty of intentional homicide and sentenced to death. However, he felt the punishment was too harsh for what he saw as a lover's quarrel and would appeal. Because he turned himself in and confessed he believed he deserved a lighter sentence. He would even blame the mother of Chen Qiaofeng. Saying if her mother had picked her up on time he wouldn't have been able to kill Chen Qiaofeng. His appeal was rejected. Wu Yidong was executed on August 31, 2021. On the day of the execution, a large group of people related to Wu Yidong gathered outside the family home of Chen Qiaofeng. They were there to threaten and intimidate the parents of Chen Qiaofeng, blaming her for the death of Wu Yidong. The police were called and had to protect the family for several days before the group dispersed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video please consider like, subscribing, and commenting. And we hope to see you again for the next one.